Welcome to Don't Panic Geocacher, the channel devoted to helping you unlock the mystery of mystery geocaches. My name is Arjen and I go by waterfan 5 on the geocaching.com website. Now I'll be talking today about using all the tools and that's part 7a of a series of 10. This series is intended to give you a structural approach on how to solve mystery caches. Part 7a is a basic edition and we'll talk about websites that can help you solve mystery caches. In 7b, I'll be talking about programs that you can install that can help you as well. I will start by demonstrating the websites and at the end I will do a comparison and show how different websites performed against each other. So what do I mean when I say use all the tools? Well, part of solving mystery caches is that it can be very time consuming. And if you do things by hand, you may do it wrong, you may make a mistake, you may overlook something. And so, utilizing tools will help you become more efficient, help you solve it faster, more accurate, maybe find solutions that you had discarded otherwise. And fortunately, because of the many geocachers and the many tools out there, there's almost a tool for everything. So we have ways to identify ciphers, we have a way to analyze the information that you're seeing, whether it's a text or an image or a, or a sound. We have multi-solvers that kind of like shoot <laughs> with hail at a cipher and try to see if anything sticks. And there's lots of different variations for the same problems. So sometimes you may like one better, it suits more your style. So it's good to understand the wide variety because the more you know, the more you know what's out there, the more tools you have at to as to help you solve these mystery caches. So in this session, I will talk about websites. So that's why it's 7A, 7B, I will talk about tools you can install to solve uh, tools to solve mystery caches. There's many of them out there and I had to pick uh, a few because there's probably 10 more I could show. Um, but these are some of the more powerful ones to solve have the broadest range of solving tools. And all these ones have the different strengths that you can utilize them for. So um, let's look at decode. So I will demonstrate all of these for about five to 10 minutes, I'll give you a quick overview. It has an identifier tool that helps you identify the ciphers. It also has hacking tools for some of the ciphers or that if you don't know keywords, that it can still solve it without knowing the keywords. It has uh, some websites have multi-solver, so that means that um, you can basically try one approach and see if it's uh, any of the ciphers. Decode doesn't have that, but other ciphers. And then Decode also has a lot of other tools that are not cipher related or are not geocaching necessarily related, like math tools and things that I'll show. We see the same for the other websites. So Box and Tricks as an identifier, hack also has a lot of other tools. Crypto programs primarily focuses on uh, just hacking and cracking ciphers. It has a lot of them, but it has minimal other stuff. Cashluth uh, doesn't have an identifier, but has a multi-solver. And it has also a lot of other tools that can help you. Organizing chaos doesn't have an identifier or a multi-solver. And you kind of need to know always the keywords, so no hacking tools, but it has a lot of other things available that are of value. And then multi-solver really has a very powerful um, multi-solver that solves a lot of different things. And it also has a great map tool. It's very useful. So six different websites. Funny enough, they all seem to come from a wide variety of countries. So Decode started out as a French website, but it is translated in English. Box and Tricks is a Swedish website. Crypto Programs and Cashluth are both hosted in the US. Organizing Chaos, uh, the S in organizing kind of gives it away. It's a UK website. And then multisolver.de is, of course, German. So, a wide variety. I didn't put a geocaching toolkit on the list. That is actually a Dutch site from origin. So, a lot of different uh, countries represented here with the website. As I mentioned, there's other ones out there. However, I had to focus on some of them. This is the Decode website, um, probably the biggest website to discuss. So, 
Um, and one of the nice things about the website is it has this cipher identifier. So I would recommend setting your homepage actually directly to this, because this in most cases first thing that I need to go to. There's another page that is very useful, it's definitely most useful pages here. And so what this does is it can identify uh, a cipher from a text, or at least try to identify it. So if I put this text in here, most of you immediately think like, oh, this would be binary text. But the analyzer tool actually gives binary, but only as the third option. Uh, and it actually puts bacon here and there. Part of that is also automatically, but let's try the bacon cipher. Normally bacon ciphers are with A's and B's, but in this case it's suggested bacon cipher. And so we encrypt it. And one of the nice things this website does is uh, automatically ranks the output in certain orders, what's the things that the right result is, but also tries multiple ways. So if there's multiple variations, for example, here A is zero, B is one, but it will try also A is one, zero, round. So and you see one of them is successful, the other is not. So we don't have to play with the settings. It immediately will try a bunch of variations for the same cipher. So that's very useful. So, um, yeah. Let's go back to our cipher identifier and pick another cipher. So pick that here. So another cipher right here. In this case, you may notice this looks like it has a lot of E's. So we look for something that is most likely just scrambles the letters. That's indeed what it detects as well. It's, hey, this looks like where the, where the text is scrambled in a certain way. So we see a number of variations, transpositions, mixing the letters. Um, Real fence does more of a zigzag type of approach. Um, this website has some pretty powerful tools where it actually, <laughs> some ciphers overlap with each other, so it might sometimes be difficult to get correct outcomes as well. So, but let's, in this case, it is a zigzag cipher. So type in the text here that we had. Again, lots of options, but we can just choose automatic description if we don't know the options, right? And again, it will try all the variations of going in different directions. First go down, then go up, first go up, then go down, start at a different location and so on. So lots of different variations and we can scroll through them, but it kind of identifies the best solutions itself and it ranks them. So here you see that indeed the correct solution is already at the top. So I don't have to scroll through the list but sometimes you have to, depending on the puzzle. Nice is that for each uh, cipher, it also explains a little bit about cipher, talks a little bit about the cipher, so it's all learning uh, part. Also has a Discord on this website, so you can also use the Discord server and things like that. So um, yeah, that is the second one. So let's go back to where we were. Let's go back to the cipher identifier earlier. See, it's still open. So. And let's try a third cipher. Go. Cipher. Analyze. And it's just engineer. Open it in a different window. Now you see that it only really shows which one of the things it is, right? So in this case, binary and those don't show up because it really doesn't think it has anything. And in this case, it is correct. It is originally type of the cipher. Open up the text. And again, you see every cipher has kind of a unique user interface that makes it so nice because really target what you need to do. It's not just one interface where you have to enter the same value. Cipher has kind of like an optimized interface, and also this one has an uh, yeah, encryption tool. So we can put that right here, and it will automatically try to. Now, in this case, my key is too short, but we already see that we're getting some pretty successful uh, elements here because um, don't PL so gives something that it thinks is correct, right? So we may just have to deal that the key is. We have to deal with a longer key, and so we can experiment with different key length. So we eventually go to a longer key. 
it will come up with don't panic geocacher so you can set the key long enough it will of course take more time but you see it in this case i technically identified it so pretty cool ciphers and you see a lot of information around it about like what this cipher is right so it's also tries to educate you on uh, the information now one of this website's uh, elements, the other useful page, I mentioned the cipher identifier, is kind of like the main page. So where it lists all the different ciphers that it has. And so we can go through this list. Right now we were in cryptography and we were doing some of the analysis. So cipher, lots of other analysis. It can do modern ciphers, like uh, ciphers used by modern day computers. And again, if I open one of those, so it will then have a unique interface for this one. So where uh, this is a hashing cipher, so where plain code becomes like a hashing like this. And I've seen websites and hashing puzzles use that, where they kind of give you the keywords, these things, and then you have to. Of course, these are so-called safe ciphers. They're very hard to crack, so you need the keywords to automatic decode them. Kind of need what's going on. But yeah, a lot of different ciphers out there. One of the other ones probably worth mentioning in the crypto analysis, so you can see a lot of different options here. Uh, all this all the alphabetic, so that not every letter goes to a single letter. Transposition, where I showed one, I showed the real fence, but it has all the common variants in there. Substitution uh, ciphers that basically a letter goes to some other letter. Um, and it has some cool features around that. So um, if we go to this most common one, alphabetic, so that every letter goes to another letter in the alphabet, it actually has some nice tools related to that. Again, it can automatically solve it. You can automatically decrypt it. So you can see it's here. So again, you can solve it by yourself. <laughs> so. Uh, if you don't know what it is, you can test a search function. So, for example, I could type in substitution, and it will bring me all the ones that have the word substitution in it, and I can kind of go to which ones I am looking for. Or I can also, um, in this case, I can do a manual check for it. So, in this case, it was substitution. And uh, let's get a substitution out there. Grab a text here that is what I know is a substitution cipher. And I kind of can say, well, I want to do a manual coding here. But what it will do is it will just allow me to fill in the letters by myself. So now I can say, okay, I have my text, but I'm going to fill it in myself. And I can say, okay, this letter M, I think it starts with the, right? So I can say the. And now it will fill in the rest of the information. Oh, D R H. Oh, probably R. So now it's filling in R. And then, okay, so what else can I figure out from here? The, so I'll have C H. Maybe this is uh, often a C in English. Hey, cash. That's words. So I can fill in more. And so you can kind of like guess your way towards the answer. What you know, what you don't know, kind of this way. Very powerful tool for this kind of functions. Let's go back to the main uh, list. So lots of cipher ones, um, very long list, um, more, more than many of the other uh, websites that you see, including some gimmicky ones, Kenny codes from South Park, specific cipher. Of course, it has common ones like Morse code and other things that you would expect. Uh, so again, more complicated, and then some random ones here at the bottom that are Enigma ciphers and some other um, yeah, ciphers that can be used here. So if you know what cipher it is, you can either search for it, or you can have it detected and see where it comes back. Um, it also has, um, again, just a substitution one. So for example, if I search Dancing Man, show me the Dancing Man cipher. And it has this nice interface that you don't need to know what it is. So you can literally look at the puzzle and say, okay, I have this character, this character, and this character, and then say decrypt that. 
that will say, okay, that is ATG for the first time. Or the other way around, I could say D3, right? Then say encrypt, and it will show me what that translates to. So for making puzzles, I can also do that. There's lots of variations. But this is just a part of this website. <laughs> Because it has lots of game solvers as well. So lots of standard solvers of um, like Scrabble solvers where with letters, what words can I make with it? So you type in the letters and say, okay, try to find the longest word without using any of these letters or with these letters. Um, there's different dictionaries that it can use in different languages. So lots of variations if you kind of like need to figure out okay i think this word i've these letters left that it can help you solve this so um let's go on number games let's take a look so it has a variety of solvers in there in there including sudoku logic quizzes for magical squares for calculating word values missing numbers these are all things that you find in like magazines and stuff like that. Regular puzzles, it has a lot of solvers for those. So if you go, for example, to the Sudoku one, you see it lists the Sudoku. So it has these different uh, images that you can do. And so you can basically uh, fill it in of what you think it needs to be. Right? So it can start empty. So this is, um, yeah, different ways that it can work. It. And so, um, more variations are are on here than you find on again most other websites, including of course it can solve those right. So it can solve those as well. Then one of the things that I'm really proud of is all the math functions that it has. So there's other websites that do math, but this one has some unique math things that are not of course are still math, but like the equation solvers, equation checkers. Uh, you it has simple calculators, but again, for a lot of the uh, calculations that you can do here, um, you can enter the information here. So enter equations and it kind of will like solve these equations. You don't even need to know the math. You just need to know what you're trying to solve and it will solve. So it has a lot of powerful tools. And of course, there's other websites out there that do it. Wolfram Alpha as well, but this one probably has as many as any. Uh, for math functions. So geometry, different combinational uh, letters. If you want permutations of a certain uh, element, it can do all those. You say you have these words, and so give me all the permutations, so all the variations, then get it right here. So it's often nice to not have to do this manually, but have a website to do it. Right? And so on. So the third one, information. Algorithms, checksum algorithms, game of life. Game of life invented by Conway. This has to do with cells, and cells die if it gets too crowded, and cells spawn a new cell if it's uh, nice and empty, if it's a good living climate. Um, and so you basically get an evolution of cells. And there's geocaching puzzles that use this, and so this allows you to set up those cells, paint them in, have it go through the different calculations based on the full set, right? When do they die? When they grow. So here it says if it has three neighbors, it becomes alive. If it has um, two or three, it will live on. And in a lot of cases, it will die. Right? Or won't. And so this can be used again for geocaching puzzles. There's a number out there that use this combination. So going back, lots of different options here. So information communication systems so here we have Bodot code morse code phone taps like the t9 text on the phone like what you use for text messaging all the days it has decoders for all of that it can analyze uh, text it can analyze pictures so barcodes it can read exif data it can do a lot of ocring information as all of that information available so you really just get one website where you go through all of this um, information. So go on. HTML courses, periodic table cipher, where it uses the periodic table to get a number in there. So again, type of very 
code, say this is my numbers, and now it will basically tell me what this is translated and actually translate to the classification, right? 17, chlorine, SO9, so on, fluor, uh, iodine, etc. So it will automatically co code that. So you can encode words here, you can enter a word, and now it will try to find as much as possible chemical elements that belong. So go on. Um, some more, some other ciphers. I already showed you some of the ciphers uh, that are more translation ciphers. But for example, go to Chinese Kodiak, then I can kind of calculate for a specific date. It can tell you what that is, and so it could be the date that it's doing rabbit. Maybe it's the number six that we need, or maybe it's the R that we need, depending on what it is, right? So it can calculate that as well. So this is really a website where you think if you need something, you just type it in the search and then you hope that it comes out of it. Uh, what you're looking for. Now, a little bit more stenography. Now, this is actually not stenography in pictures. Most of these are stenography in text. So take that into account. There's a lot of different ways to hide things in one. So for example, Latin gibberish. Kind of mess with the beginning and the end of the word. Same as like big Latin. It's just fun ways to disguise text. Geography, so now we talk about like encoding characters and geo hash and other ways of encoding information. So we have information there. Some specific things for French language only. It's originally a French website. And so you can do that. And some music ciphers. So five different ways of encoding using music to encode. So yeah, very powerful website, lots of different tools, but lots of different solving tools as well as a very powerful identifier. Translation tools. So the next one that we look at is uh, Box and Tricks. I think that's how you pronounce it. I think Box and something like a think outside the box. Tricks. It's kind of like tricks, like tricks to solve things. Also has the word Q in it. So Box and Tricks. That's how I'm pronouncing it. Um, very powerful website. Had a lot of great tools uh, in there. A lot of code breaking tools. It actually is also like a mobile game related website so it's uh, not just tools but the website is a combination between the tools it has itself uh, as well as references to tools that are somewhere else so not all of these are on the website itself in certain cases it may simply point you to resources where you can find them which actually is very useful because it kind of points you to a powerful way so uh, let's look at the categories so some text word solvers so basically to work with text but not like a Crossword solvers, like if you know certain letters. Anagram, so in scramble words. Cryptic crosswords, so there's all kinds of tools like that. Analyzer, including the cipher identifier. I love cipher identifiers because it often can help you in a way. So we'll take a look at that. Then it can encode uh, and decode a bunch of different uh, ciphers itself, including suspects. Uh, like pig pen ciphers, playfair ciphers, fidgety, bill fence, etc. So then it has some links to uh, some modern ciphers, how you can encode and decode those. And then it has some links to stenography, analyzers, and websites. Stenography is hiding pictures in pictures or pictures in audio files or something, putting something out of plain sight so that you don't know that you're looking at the code. So um, these are some ways to do that. So it links to some websites, stereograms, it's like we have to look at 3D, stack height. But all of these are links to other websites. So if I go to one of them, it will link me to another website where I can download, for example, the tool. So this is a tool that can link, put something inside these type of files. But still a very useful resource. If you know that you're probably dealing with this, you have Right here, eight different tools that you can take a look at. Some code tables. Uh, this is just a few. Now, Book Cipher is uh, an interesting one because it's probably one of the more powerful Book Cipher tools in there. Uh, book Cipher, of course, being that you have a bunch of text, book. Then you have a code that kind of like indexes into the book right here. And then you get a result. So in this case, it could mean Go to line 14, go to word number 3, or go to letter 3. 
and it kind of allows you to configure it here so it supports three parts um, I actually think there's a part missing it should be four because then you page or paragraph line word character <laughs> so then you can support four parts but it supports three which is pretty powerful more powerful than some of the other websites and it will do it for you right you have to put it in this format so the semicolons in between and if you have pages or paragraphs you just text in between it so it knows how to do that but like i said it could also be line number and then word or line and character and it can do it so pretty powerful tool right there and yeah probably one of the more powerful ones in this type there's some math things so again converting base conversions decimal to hex and other variations prime numbers looking up numbers in pi so if i go here I see pi here and I can basically search for a specific number. So this is the only one that organizes like this, but can sometimes be very useful. Certain thing, maybe close to something, you see a large amount of pi and uh, hopefully you find what you're looking for. And then it has some alphabets now. There's websites that have hundreds of them. This one only has a few. Um, that's not a problem. It's just not something that's there's some common ones, but you wouldn't necessarily go to this website. The really powerful parts of this website are the, uh, as I mentioned, the cipher identifier and some of the solving tools that it has. Let's take a look at, uh, at that. So cipher identifier is, I have a text, but I don't know what it is. And it will show you here the ones that it kind of can recognize, which is a lot of the ones that are shown here. And what I do, and how you use it is that you just put the text in there. So I put the first one in here. And uh, it has some text options where I can kind of like massage the text. Maybe I want better, so I clean it up a little bit to get a higher success rate. But if I don't need to do that, I can just say analyze text. And it tells me, oh, it thinks with 59 votes that this is a simple substitution. Alphabetic. And it is correct, that is what this cipher is. So let's try the next one. This is a Vigineer one. So, oops. Go. so again, analyze the text and indeed both word Vigineer with variants to each other um, are the top two choices. And so again, it correctly recognized the cipher. Let's try one more. Analyze the text, and it's correct. Playfair. So again, it is correct. This is a Playfair cipher. Let's go one more. You see here, you see a lot of E's in here. So most likely we're dealing with a letter scrambling here. That is just the type of analyzing that it does as well, right? It tries to see, oh, this is a transposition cipher. And indeed, it is correct. It is a transposition. To be exact, it is the polymer transposition cipher. That's what's being. So very cool if you just have a text and you don't know what it is, um, you kind of can put it in here and then it will analyze that information and see if it is correct. Of course, something like this in here, a bunch of zeros and ones, and basically says, yeah, this must be binary, right? All the zeros and ones, most likely it's correct. So a very cool starting point where it tries to identify 25 ciphers and uses some machine learning techniques to identify them. So yeah, nice and powerful tool to start coding process. Now it has also some uh, automatic solvers. So let's take a look at some of them. So I will go here, let's see. Engineer one looks good, go there. And so you see here an auto solve without a key. So that means that uh, if we enter a cipher, that it will attempt to solve it. Right? It's never a guarantee that they can solve it. The text may be too short, might be too long. But we just type this in here, say auto solve it, and then let it do its dirty work, right? Let's go through it and it will take a chance. Now, of course, uh, we'll have to uh, some settings here that we have to deal with. Well, in this case, my key is actually long. 
And so if I do 318, it actually find it. So uh, in this case, that might look like I don't have a solution. Fortunately, I have the option to change these values and I could say, oh, for whatever reason, I know that my key is longer and I can set a different value for my key and try to auto solve it again. And so now it will try with longer keys and you see here that now we found it and it actually tells me the key is Panic Geo. Successfully able to solve it. So yeah, very powerful solving tool and it has this for quite a variety of its ciphers. It has this solving that you can use, which is very nice and that you don't have a key, you kind of can let the system do that for you. So, um, show. Uh, one more, which is more like a, like a crossword solver, um, simple tool where you could say, well, type your letters here. So I know something starts with an A, then a question mark starts with a C. And so it says, oh, your work must be arc. So, and of course, make it longer and it will give me all the words that fit there. And so it will work with that. It has some options here. Start, start with a word within a word and so. Again, some just some interesting other things that you can do. Same for anagrams, cryptograms, um, solve as well. And then some more analysis tools about the text. If you want to analyze it further, if you know more about ciphers, you can do that. So um, yeah, that's an overview of uh, box and tricks. Um, so some powerful tools, mostly focused around ciphers. Need some more about what got this site started. The Cicada cipher and the Zodiac cipher some more uh, on that as well. But yeah, um, powerful analyze tools, powerful solve tools, very useful site and definitely must have. Let's take a look at crypto programs, cryptoprograms.com. Um, very powerful website made by the same people that make a crypto crack, it's something that you can install, which will also demo how that works. And this website focuses strictly on ciphers. It's not necessarily geocaching related, it's more just cipher related. It has some other tools, but those are mostly frequency and statistic analysis. And you see here on the front page, it kind of tells you what it can do. It can create and basically encode and decode all these different ciphers that are listed here. That's all the usual suspects that you expect, like simple substitution. Um, it has, of course, so engineer, so one time pad type cipher, two square, four square, um, columnar transposition, all the usual suspects are here that you would find. But the cool part is it has solvers for a lot of these. So you see here for a large number, it actually can solve those. So that's pretty cool because that means that I don't need to know the keyboard. I can have the tool figure out the keyboard for me. So, and there's websites that do that as well. Some of the more common ones, like uh, the Caesar ciphers and the substitution ciphers, but there's very few that do, like Playfair or some of the other more complicated ciphers that will do it and do it successfully. So this one probably has some of the most powerful real defense encoding. So let's actually take a look at that. So if I do a uh, route transposition, real fence, those are special variants where I reorganize the letters. If I go into that and uh, type in a specific text, that's the text that I want to encrypt. And I can specify over how many columns I want to divide. Let's say that I want to use seven. You see that it basically writes this out. But then I could say, well, um, don't want any spaces. But I can specify how I want to read it lots of different variations that it supports, including diagonal, uh, from close to top. As soon as I start doing that, I get these different combinations. And make it the same letters, just reshuffled, right? But it reshuffled in a certain way. And so here it will show what the reshuffle looks like. So it makes it pretty hard to read. So in this case, the cache is slow. So that's how it, uh, row down the text, so from bottom left up, and then it reads it from the top right. So GH, TW, this way. So 
pretty cool uh, encryption and it's very fast. Um, nice feature about this website for every cipher. It has kind of like the background. So if you learn more about ciphers and what they look like, it has a little bit of how they work and how it's, it's very nice. But as I mentioned, um, the cool thing is that it doesn't only have these creations for encoding and decoding, but it has these solvers. So let's uh, take a look at some. So very common, of course, is uh, the sort of substitution, it's the monoalphalytic substitution, simple substitution. You see it having different names. So if I go there, I need a keyword, right? If known, that has this solve option. So if I don't know the keyword, it doesn't really care. And of course, there is always keywords that I cannot find. The text might be too short, so it's harder to find a keyword. Um, but if the text is long enough, then it will typically resolve it. And so here you see it go through it. And um, well, we already have pretty readable coordinates very quick, like within seconds, it was able to get pretty long. It doesn't tell me what necessarily the keyword is, but it was able to come up with an alphabet that it worked. So the solver kind of like solved it, and we're almost getting to four, three, four. And there's enough here for me to of figure out what the problems would be, right? So um, better was if it had a manual option as well that you could kind of correct it and say to this M probably needs to be a D. So I could say okay this needs to be a dot three nine yes this is probably a six so this part is correct not this part that would be slightly cool. Yeah very nice. Uh, as I mentioned um, the cool part about this website is, and the great part, it's somewhat unique, is that it can do all these, um, so many ones, right? So for the route transposition, um, it can solve all those and it will try all those different variations. So uh, it will look at all the different variations, try all those variations that it supports. It's a large number, any direction, any direction, diagonal, and it will try all those and see if it can solve those. But also other ones like, um, Let's take another one, like a Playfair one, for example. It's located right here. So let me get a Playfair encryption up here. And of course, if I don't know the keyword, I simply say solve. Now, Playfair is slightly more cumbersome, especially if you start using keywords because it's a slightly more advanced cipher. I don't have a lot of text here, so it looks pretty long for a coordinate text you probably want more text but it will go through it and I won't necessarily wait for it here but after a few minutes it will actually come up with the right coordinates. so um, yeah pretty advanced uh, here knowing that my cipher is pretty long as well you already start seeing that it starts looking like that it starts looking readable but like I said it will take a little bit of time to solve that as well it will stop automatically once it thinks it has done enough kind of but yeah, that is the, the good part about this uh, tool, is the amount of ciphers it can actually crack without. So it has some more background on it. I mean, behind this website, they're part of the uh, American Program Association. So they're definitely this is the <laughs> very well knowledge uh, about what they can do. Also has a search function, so that's kind of nice. So if you know what you look for, you don't have to know which menu it is in, you can just type the search function and it will bring you there, it shows you what it is on the website. So yeah, that is crypto programs. Okay, let's take a look at Cashloof. So Cashloof is a great website and it has a lot of different features. Um, not all puzzle related actually. It's great for solving puzzles as well. So the first section, the quick links, is actually all shortcuts to the uh, geocaching.com website that brings you directly to a specific frequently used session, but has this convenient menu. So you can jump directly to your owner dashboard, craft caches that you're working on. So it kind of is a homepage before geocaching.com website that has a lot of list useful little shortcuts. It can also search, so it has some specialized searches where you can search find is still open or recently puzzles so it has a lot of interesting little shortcuts and I've noticed myself often 
to this before going to the geocaching.com website because I can find it quicker here where I need to find the geocaching website from website itself. So yeah, nothing to do with puzzles, but very useful. Uh, the biggest uh, part for solving puzzles is actually this multi decoder. What is a multi decoder? It's a that it solves many puzzles at once. So it has some examples in here that I can use. So I don't have to type anything. But for example, I can type in this code. And I say I don't know what this is. I can press solve. Note I can enter keywords if necessary, but it will just show me all the different variations of what this code would do in the different ciphers. And we see here one that actually looks pretty much like English. This was my first code. Quick bound fox jumped on the lazy dog. Now, uh, this doesn't only work with just plain. Um, I can also just type in something myself. Um, so here I say, this is the cipher I found, but I don't know what or cipher text I found, but I don't know what cipher it is. But I do know, maybe from another part, that this was the keyword, right? And if there was multiple keywords, I can enter multiple. And now I press solve again. And now it will show me how that works, right? So I can now scroll down again. And I see a lot of different elements here. So you see all the Caesar ciphers and Visioneer. Well, in that case, it doesn't look like English. Porto key. But what I can do, of course, is uh, do a search on the page. Just with this search. So search like this, type in North, and voila, one of them shows up. North, this cache is hidden by the coordinates. North. And again, I can do multiple searches uh, if the first keyword doesn't work. But now I know it was a Playfair. Maybe I missed a hint on the website. Maybe I didn't know what cipher it was. Maybe that was the puzzle. But this allows me to solve the puzzle with just one website where I just entered what I know. And if I knew a keyword, I entered it as well. Of course, if I don't know the keyword, I can just solve it, right? Uh, if the cipher needed the keyword. But it could be that your cipher doesn't need the keyword. Let's take a look at another example. So I enter here information, no clue. Looks like time related, but don't know this cipher text. Right? So I click solve. And again, the website would solve this. And as soon as it solves this, I can kind of start looking for um, what could it be? North. Oh, there we go. North. And we found it here. Apparently, there's something called clock code. So, uh, clock code apparently transfers um, these times to different words and letters. And I get a coordinate here, fictional, I should say. Um, and now I've solved it, and I didn't even have to do anything. I just had to put it in this mode and go what it is. As you can see here at the top, it supports over 245 variants. So you kind of try all the variants at once without having to just blink an eye. So lots of great tools. Multi decoder, definitely a reason to go. Right? But it's not the only reason. I already mentioned the shortcuts. But if I just look at the tools, it had a lot of different tools. So these are mapping related tools. So if I go here, it has of course coordinate conversions where I can say, enter a coordinate here. So just enter a partial coordinate and it will convert it into many different variants. So that is great. Um, then so there's a variety of map tools about including intersections, you can patch convert. Then map coordinates out on the map, then enter coordinates. It will basically show you where they are. So that's very easy. So you can maybe see a pattern there. Also has the show lines option. So if I show with a certain coordinate, maybe see if I draw lines, if it maybe spells out a coordinate. So that's very cool as well. So those are some of the mapping tools. Intersections, sometimes you need that for puzzles. Intersections between lines, all. Great tools. So um, it also supports a bunch of code tables. So let's take a look. So it says 200 plus. So uh, let's take a look at the list actually, because that's one of the nice features is that I can 
see what they look like. So sometimes you only know uh, what it looks like. You don't know the name. This one quickly allows you to scan which one looks like one of the numbers. And I think it shows the letter A each time. You kind of know the beginning. Of course, the letter A wasn't used in your puzzle. Kind of, but maybe the style you recognize. If you as well. So we can type in our text here. So it's also great for making puzzles. Because ways so type it just a little bit and then say okay I'm looking uh, let's say dancing right and then translate to another web page it's still on the same website there it will now show me so there we go so we see the dancing man part uh, right here so here you see the alphabet and the numbers and you where that go to. However, I don't need to do it like this. Um, so, for example, decoding purposes, let's say I had these characters on my page, the dancing men, I can just click on them and it would allow me to basically encode the site as well. So, very visual way, you don't need to have to do translations and stuff like that. So, yeah, the code tables are great because it has a lot of them. So like I said, it's 200 plus. And so those are all substitution type ciphers, right, but with symbols. So it's worth taking a look and see if you recognize the symbols. So similar, uh, of course, the coding tools, these are the ciphers, and that's basically all the ciphers, but a lot of them are different, right? So um, the Caesar cipher, the Morse codes, the things like that, but also very specific ones like a cow cipher. And all of them can be done Two ways. So I type the plain text here, three, five, say encrypt, and it will translate it into this moo cipher, cow cipher, or the same way the other way around. If I had the cipher, of course, it's part of a puzzle. Try to see what it encodes to. So back this, right? So it's just a matter of entering, click decrypt, and now it decrypts this cipher. It doesn't have any solving or anything like that. It does have some analyze tools uh, that you can use to analyze uh, a cipher, but nothing that would automatically solve it for you. You kind of need to do the entire encoding option. But the multi uh, works out well in that random guessing what the cipher would be. Also, has some number tools of what you can expect. So, this is more text related, cipher related, but anything from like base conversions where you basically use number into binary, octal stuff like that. Uh, finding numbers into pi, finding numbers into other roots. Go here, say, okay, show me which is in pi. And no, that's not what I want. Let's look at, sorry, show number at specific position here. And it says, well, this is the number at that position. So many pi related puzzles where you give you these numbers and you have to offset in pi. And because that points to you. Then the last section, some miscellaneous tools. This is first where I go to tool to clean up the text. So if you have a text and you want to lowercase, remove special characters, very nice because maybe a specific tool needs a specific type of input. This allows you to clean up the text, remove lines, remove extra characters. So it's a very nice cleanup tool, very useful. As I mentioned, some of the analysis tools, like frequency analysis, that helps you identify what cipher it is. But many other type of special solvers, like the Sudoku solver is on here, logical solver, logical quizzes, QR readers, barcodes, and uh, the Doctor Who type font special thing here, where you can type something, say a word, word, and it would show me what that word would look like in um, Califreyan. So yeah, lots of cool stuff on this website. So definitely worthwhile, not just for the shortcuts, but also the multi solver and some of the miscellaneous tools and the encryption. Very much a geocaching oriented website. Coordinate compression it has a lot of big power. Okay, let's take a look at organizing chaos. I typically refer to it as organizing chaos since there's also something called caching box and so on. This one is organized in chaos. And again, very powerful. 
website, lots of great tools. Um, if anything says it's not bug free, then it spells the word likely. So <laughs> it's funny, uh, at least to me. <laughs> but let's take a look at what the website can do. Um, it's a lot of sci-fi stuff, right? So we have uh, some alphabets, so ASCII and some other pony, can you speak with alphabets? Then substitution alphabets, so sim single substitution, but also a rotation ciphers. More complicated, so Vigineer, all four groups basically variant, and other variants of those are here. Transposition, so that just rearranges the letters, and so with drill fence, redefence, columnar deformation, common ones are here for uh, changing the letters out. Playfair. Foursquare, so so it has a lot of these tools in there. So a lot of cipher tools. So Enigma cipher, some advanced ones as well. Uh, RSA, some complex ones uh, that are more modern. Some gimmicky ciphers, uh, base conversion to numbers in how to calculate hash number. Sometimes that can be a hint. Um, conversions, base conversions again, but also otherwise you can code. Some coordinate utilities, so geohashing, uh, converting websites to other codes. So very useful for multiple words if you type words. Now, of course, you showed this in other ones, so where we can uh, type in what, so, or type in a coordinate. So let's make a random coordinate here. So, just uh, two, so, okay, and then say, Get what word address, and it will say reimburse preposition primes. So now we have this puzzle. So if you want to make a puzzle, it's the easiest way. Well, somewhere in California here gives me some nice location, and it has a nice integration to Google Maps so that you can see where it is. But of course, it can also be around. I say get coordinates, then it will tell me where it is located, right? So it's the same coordinates, just in a decimal system. So pretty cool. Uh, it can do all these integrations. So right for coordinate conversion and a nice integration. So stenography. That's it's a, one of the few websites where it actually has the different tools right there to do uh, four different types of steganography. So steganography is that hiding something in a picture. So you have a picture, might be hidden text in there or a hidden picture. See pictures barcode hidden that you can't see when you look at it, and even if you zoom, in, you can't see anything. It uses the encryption of the file to put extra information. There's tons of different variants out there, including ones with passwords and without passwords. But these are four popular ones. So this is a website where you can try four popular ones relatively quick. One stop shop. Definitely one of the great things about this website. Can of course do more. Uh, uh, with images like ex uh, extracting the EXIF data, the extra information format file, and getting maybe something that's stored in there. So those are all different ways. Of it doesn't have an identifier or a multi-solver that allows you to do it. But it does have some um, basic analysis tools, actually very advanced analysis tools. If you're familiar with those, they have all that information out there to kind of like analyze cipher. Now, the old bits one is again for something special, regular expression, some niche type solutions, uh, Roman numerals, things like that. So, nice wide variety, um, but especially on ciphers, it has a lot, right? And code. Uh, good part about it is as well, and so let's uh, take a look at some of those. So, let's take. Um, Cipher. So uh, let's take a text that I just prepared here, put it in here. And so if I don't enter the key, I can still do some investigation. Like, for example, check what the length is of the cipher. So you see here that the most likely length is 18 based on the analysis of the text without a key. So that could give me a hint of what I'm looking for on the guest page. Now, in this case, I know the password. So don't panic, geocacher. 
And if you count, then you see that its guess of 18 is pretty accurate. So, and now, um, yeah, let's see, so we say decrypt. And it says the cache is hidden at the following coordinates, and I've solved the puzzle. Of course, I needed to know the keyword, I needed to know the, um, the cipher, and, but then it solved it. And the same, it can do it the other way around. You can encrypt as well, you can also make puzzles with this. And now I find but the cool thing about this website is it has these cleanup functions and analyze functions right with every cipher. So if I go with another one as well, then, um, so columnar function, for example, it has again these cleanup functions right here. So I don't have to go somewhere else. And if I enter something here, I can kind of use these analyze tools to say, tell me more about this, right? So tell me something that might help solve it. Or if I know the answer, I maybe have to reverse the spaces or maybe it needs to be an uppercase or reversed. I can do that right away, right at here. Let's see, quickly reverse the text if I go. But then if I say I do know it, then I can say, okay, decrypt it. And you see, column at position, it's just clean. So, cool website, uh, focus a lot on the ciphers, a couple of other tools here. But uh, yeah, very useful. Again, if you want to solve something, bunch of ciphers, including some of the modern ones, right? So semi-modern ones <laughs> um, that are out there that uh, maybe the regular websites don't have, like an RSA encoding function. It all has that available, and you can do that here. If you have multiple information, you can do that. Not just the key, but it can encode and decode those as well. So let's take a look at the Microsoft. So you see the URL here at the top. Solve it PE. It's also in the presentation. So, as multi server name suggests, um, it is a multi solver, meaning that it solves multiple ciphers at once, tries them all, and then basically gives you input. So, it's a German website. The website is completely in English, so it's just hosted in Germany. And so, um, yeah, the main page is immediately brings you to this multi solver where you have the input. You option to enter two keys, but those are optional, uh, depending on the cipher, of course, you may not have those. And then it goes down, right? And we see a lot of suspects here, cipher bits, vacant cipher, um, or dots like a old application, or Ford, which is a Vigenaire, one-time bad variant, um, Caesar ciphers, Cho ciphers, Foursquare, Kenny code, some of them that don't mean much to me. Sprache, not sure what it is. Code, Morse code, Playfair. So we see a lot tab code, Tom Tom so Vanity, etc. So a lot of them, and a lot of them have variations as well. So the multi solver will actually try all the variations as well. So let's actually try that with a code. Code in right here. And in this case, know the key. And that's what it's ideal for. Right, Panic geocacher. There we go. So we type in the key. This is ideal if you have the code. You maybe think you know what the keyword is, but you don't really know what the cipher is. It would be a lot of work to try a lot of individual ciphers and hope you get the answer. So this one is if you have no clue what the cipher, maybe there is no keyword. It's a keyword. You can try it out, right? Uh, and it's kind of like the Google feel lucky. Well, this is kind of like lucky that cipher and the code that you think it might be might be the cache title might be something that's just given away might be another puzzle that you had to solve that's the key and now you can just try to solve it and um, it will you have one key so we can do that and we say so super fast you see like a fraction of a second and now we can just scroll down and see if we see something that makes sense to us right it will automatically expand the ones where it has some information if it didn't expand it, so like this one, it must mean that it needs something else. Either it needs two keywords, or maybe the characters don't work for what it's trying to do. So we can scroll through this. We see a lot of different encodings that have been done. So all the Caesar rotations, and you see it immediately tried all the variants. So we can quickly do it. And again, it skips the one for which it can't make any sense out. So here you see Upsidic, another variant. ASCII, you see it 
pixel map codings with different variations. Four square with only one key, you just use the key twice. So a lot of variations. This one actually looks like a coordinate. We know in this case that is not the area we're looking for. So this could have been the solution. It's not in this case. And we scroll down. It's some keyboard ciphers where we can use the keyboards to get different locations. See here some settings as well that we could change. So we can defaults often point to English. So you may want to set it to English if you get it more uh, familiar. It's actually one of the requests I would have. It's like, can I remember that I always want English as a default or that I can set the language easier? Anyway, so it goes on and again, it skips ciphers that it doesn't need to. And so until we get to one that looks familiar, right? So Playfair, as we uh, see it, the cache is hidden at the following location, door three. Now, this is not an actual cache. This is just a location I made up, so no need to go there. So yeah, so apparently this was a Playfair cipher, but I didn't need to know that. So I solved it right away. Of course, much easier if you kind of expect that the answer is. So for example, in this case, I expect North to be in there. I can just do a search for North and then it will find it as well. Or I may have to try multiple, like um, maybe North didn't work. Three needs to be, so it as well. And you see, based on the Google will just tell me, Chrome will just tell me there's only one that has the word three. So it's pretty sure <laughs> this is the right one. It could also be that it might be, um, so in this case, the puzzle looks to be 35. 3, 4, so I could have searched for 3, 4 and see where 3, 4 was found and see if that tells me anything. So I don't have to manually scroll, but it could be a step in the puzzle, so it's always risky to do a search. If you don't find anything, it doesn't mean it isn't there. Maybe the text says something completely different, like a bow 100 degrees from the stop sign. So it could not be a coordinate, it could be something else. So that's how to use the multisolver. Um, let's try. Uh, another one, another code. So as I've shown, this website has some obscure and uh, interesting ciphers that are not necessarily recognizable. This is actually from an existing cache, which is the cache code. Um, so it's one that I published. Um, and if I take a look at that, so I'll just because it's not relevant to the code, we get here this weird combination of words doesn't look like anything to me, um, but the cache page didn't mention anything about the keyword. So let's try the multi solver and see what it does. So we say solve, and of course it's done quick, right? So nothing really here. So now we can start searching for three. No, three doesn't find anything. North doesn't find anything, because that's the region where I'm looking. So maybe 33, get a couple of hits. Letter values, um, that doesn't look like a coordinate. Let's go to the next one. Geohash, oh, I'm looking for something in the 33 range. But you see it tries lots of different variations. Nothing that works out. Scroll down. Again, something that uh, is not like the coordinates. And then finally, the last one, we see something that we get a hit. Paranoid Morse code. That's pretty interesting. The exact paranoid Morse code lower end. So I'll explain to you what this is, but uh, yeah, think about it. What could this be? So this is indeed the answer to the geocache. So this is the final, if you look in the checker, this is the final location. So we've successfully solved the puzzle. Let's take a look how does paranoid Morse code work. Interesting name. I don't even think the person that invented the name knows why it's called like that. Let's look at the layout of the words and the letters. So the letter E, we're talking about lower end Morse code. So let's look at the lower end of the letters. E has like a dash at the bottom, right? And T has like a single entry point, so that's dot. So we get dash dot. That represents the letter M in Morse code. Now let's look at nil. The N has two dots at the bottom. I has one, three dots, and then L has a dash L again is a dash at the bottom, right? Ignore the rest of the character. So we get dot, 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 dash, dash, which is a three. Next one, F, A, A is dot, dot, dot. The D is a dash, the E is a dash. The dot, 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 dash, dash. Which a Morse code again is three. So we have N, three, three. So 
or this was lower end Morse. Um, if we used uh, middle Morse, it would use the center of the letter. So E in this case would be dash, and the uh, T in the middle would again be represented dot, a single one. So you see this would actually encode to the same dash dot. Expect to see an N for the center. Um, and the same, but here is different. Here I get now five dots if I go there. Right? There's actually six dots around the N. So an E, the F fade with a dash, dash, dot, dot, dash. So we would get a very different for center one and again for different for upper one. But you see here, it starts indeed with the N and then it becomes quickly garbage, right? It doesn't take much. So that's what Paranaut Morse is. You see a lot more things that are being guessed here that, of course, are all incorrect. But that's the cool thing about this website. It tries a lot of things at once. And in this case, it solved the puzzle that even after solving it, you may not have known why it was correct. But now you know something which is called Paranaut Morse. The multi um, solver is not the only good thing about this website. There's actually two other tools here substitution tool, which is plain out of the box substitution tool. Um, no solver or anything, but it has some options to transform the text. But just for subscription sites, you can use this. But the map tool is quite useful as well. So you see here, plants is in the middle of Europe. Switch to another map. So here, let's go to city. Go a city in Germany. Zoom in. We can click on the map, and it will tell us the coordinates of where we are right here. And we can add markers, and this can be useful for both designing maybe geo art as well as maybe working on a puzzle and might give you a solution. Because what I can do is I can use those locations to add markers on the map. I can maybe say uh, uh, a one name and say okay i want to go from this location to this location so seven seven hundred and i want every so many decimal seconds i want to go somewhere else so so diagonally in this case so we'll change this number as well and i say okay now I can zoom in to where it is, and we see that it has added these on the map, right? So it will add it. The longer I make it, the more dots it will add. In this case, there's only two. If I took a longer distance, it would add. So it will kind of spread out over time. Um, you can also bulk add. So if you have a bunch of coordinates, and sometimes puzzles do have a bunch of coordinates. So you can enter all those coordinates in here. So just start somewhere else. Here, now I take this and just modify a little bit. Just modify it again, so I get like different coordinates here. Let's add one more. So I can add these all as once again. I can choose how big of a circle I want, how wide it is, etc. Um, so I can do all that. Press OK, and you see it adds another layer. I can click the magnifying glass that will do it. And now I can see where this is, right? So I can see how this is spelled out. There we go. And so this could, for example, represent the number three, right? If you think it starts right here, and then it could be number three. So if you see a cache with a bunch of coordinates, it might actually be that it spells out the coordinates on the map. And this uh, tool help you identify easily because you can easily add a bunch of to that. Again, also great for designing geo art or something like that. Good thing is that I can download this as a GPX. I can upload a GPX. So it also works with anything that really uses GPX, like the geocaching.com website or uh, anything else like Project GC. And you can directly communicate it, visualize it on the map, play with it. So yeah, pretty useful tool. So that was an overview of some of the websites. There's many, many more out there, but some of the bigger ones out there. Hopefully they will give you some starting point, 
trying to solve mystery caches and give you some tricks when solving mystery caches. Let's also compare these websites on kind of like power. So not only on how broad are the tools, so they have an identifier, solve things like that, but also like how well do they perform. So using a plain text, a typical view cache plain text, made it slightly longer to give websites a shot, but also use a, a fairly long key to make it again more complex. Simple ones would be solve them. And then um, try a variation of different cipher in different classes. Transposition just means shuffling the letters. Substitution is a plain alphabet substitution. Every letter goes to the same letter. A poly uh, cipher like Imagineer, Playfair, and Enigma. So basically they go in complexity, they go up. And let's see how the different websites does. So uh, that gives me these cipher texts. And basically I use these cipher texts on all the websites and see what it did, right? So notice the play for slightly longer because of the way the cipher works. Every now and then it has to put X in there because it can't have two letters that are the same in the cipher. That's why it's slightly longer. And then this was the outcome. So here you see the websites, so Decode, Cashloof, Multisolver, uh, Organizing Chaos, Crypto Programs, and Box and Tricks. And I put a three-letter combination in, whether it was, could it both decode and encode it, or could it only decode it? Um, did it crack the code successful without needing the keyword, or did I need to give it hints, change settings, and provide maybe partial ciphers or sometimes complete keywords to solve it? So it still had hacking tools, but it needed, or it needed some assistance. Um, or did it not even try, and it just had a multi where it tried multiple. Uh, so it's kind of like a different approach where it can't crack it, but it cracks a lot of ciphers at the same time. So one tries multiple keywords, the other one tries multiple ciphers. They're pretty much multiple exclusive. If a website has one, it doesn't seem to have the other. But also I tried the identifier. So did it successfully identify it? Mean it was one of the top candidates. Um, I think they used top five. Um, did it uh, identify not at all? So it wasn't, it was there, but it wasn't in the top five. Um, or did it only do analysis tools? It doesn't have an identifier, right? So the best code something can have is ECK, means it uh, was able to encode and decode, it cracked it successfully, and it also identified the cipher. And you see a variety of those, right? So decode for substitution cipher was perfect. Managed to recognize it, managed to crack it, and uh, it can encode and decode the same one. Others, like Cashloof, it doesn't have an identifier, it only has analysis, so you can identify it yourself. But it has a multi-solver, so that kind of helps you out. Note that the multi-solver in this case doesn't do Enigma, so it doesn't put that in there, but it does have a tool. And so the same for each website, kind of like a comparison, um, how they work with different ones. And for example, you sometimes see that where one website is able to crack one, so this one was able to crack the transposition cipher, the websites were not necessarily able to do so. So it kind of gives you an idea of um, what websites are good for what websites are good for. Note that not in all cases um, it was so easy, some much longer than the other two. Uh, get the keywords out there, but also the power. We see that most of them, so for example, Multisolver doesn't have an addition one, but um, quite a few don't have, for example, Enigma Cypher. So it kind of gives you an idea what different websites can do, um, how they can work, um, and what they can provide. And of course, the demonstrations of it kind of give you a broader overview as well. But yeah, you see that not everyone is able to solve every code and not able to identify every code. For example, Box and Tricks was able to, um, K, 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 K was able to identify all correct, while uh, D code is the transposition cipher. It didn't come up with it correctly. So it's, it's still um, sometimes good to vary and try different tools when you're sure about something. See, maybe if one tool doesn't do it, let's try another to do it. So 
this is the end of 7a. So in 7b, I will talk about some installable tools. So that will be released soon. If you enjoyed it, please press like. That way other people can find it as well and can see and enjoy and learn more about these three caches. If you want to stay informed when new videos drop, uh, please press subscribe. That way you will be notified when new videos will be released. If you have comments, please leave comments on the website. It's always appreciated. You can also ask me questions. Maybe you didn't understand something or maybe something wasn't quite clear the way I explained it. Feel free to contact me. If you have suggestions, maybe there's a certain technique you would like me to explain, I can certainly uh, open to that. Or maybe you would like me to feature one of your mystery caches in one of the videos. More than happy to consider that as well. You can contact me at waterfan5 on the geocaching.com website. Or if you prefer email, you can use geocacher.waterfan5 at gmail. So that's the end of this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for your time. And hopefully the next time you see a mystery cache, make the panic slightly less.